Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2019 film, The Beach House, and it's a Shudder original film, and it's going to be available on Shudder Thursday, July 9th, uh, when I'm putting this review up. It's a little bit ahead of time because Shudder does send me screeners, which is very nice of them, so I can kind of make this stuff available to you. So since I'm putting this out ahead of time, uh, this is just hitting Shudder soon. No spoilers for this review, but I'm going to give you a very small synopsis of kind of what this film is. Um... Not anything that would give anything away because I don't want to. I want people to really experience this, but enough to kind of pique your interest, maybe. Uh, written and directed by Jeffrey A. Brown. Um, this individual actually, this is his first feature-length film directing and writing. He had done a lot of work on other films before, doing various things on film sets. Mainly uh, location management, which has come into it has become handy for making the film the beach house because the location is awesome uh if nothing else the scenery is very very beautiful with this film because it's at a beach house it's on the beach and they do a good job of with their cinematography and directing really kind of capturing the beauty of the beach but also capturing the ugliness of other things that kind of go on in the film uh there are some horrific moments there's some gross out stuff in this film which that may be really exciting to some people and make people be like, eh, I don't know if I want to get into the gross out factor. Um, there's something in this that actually grossed me out. It kind of makes my skin crawl. It's something that I have a particular issue with whenever I see it in film. Not issue as in I think it's bad in the film. Issue as in it makes my skin crawl. Like it's something that, that gets me going and I'm just like, ugh. I literally would kind of like have my mouth open when I was watching particular parts of this film for that reason. So kudos to Jeffrey A. Brown for getting me kind of creeped out and getting my skin crawling. Because <laughs> since the practical effects were done well, it elicited that response for me. So that's one of the good things about it. So quick kind of synopsis, a few sentences about this film. Uh, it's basically about these two characters, Randall and Emily, who are in college age kids and well kids adults I guess young adults college age and they're having a little bit of an issue with their relationship it seems like the two of them are kind of diverging in their paths in life maybe when they kind of want to stick together so they go away to the beach house which is owned by Randall's father and when they get there they're like oh we have this to ourselves but then there happen to be other people there the another couple who are actually staying there um, who were friends of his father, and then things start to get weird. And that's kind of where I'm going to cut it off, because I don't want to, you know, lead people too much on it. Uh, the opening sequence of this film is kind of calming, but at the same time, a little bit alarming in the sense that the music is really kind of upping that feeling of, like, something wrong, something terrifying going on, even though the actual images of what you're being shown isn't actually terrifying. That's what I'm saying, it's like, it's a calming image, and had the music not been there, y you would just be watching it like, yeah, you know, I've seen stuff like this before, it looks nice, it looks beautiful, and it's calming, but it's an important sequence in the beginning, because it comes into play later, and by the end of the film, you'll understand what that opening sequence actually means. When I was first watching it, I'm watching the opening sequence, and I'm like, Okay, um, I'm assuming this comes into play much later in the film, that there's some sort of un, uh, hidden significance at the moment, but that'll become clear in the end, and it does. Uh, you, you do end up getting it in the end. One scene in particular in the end that kind of mirrors, in a way, this opening sequence. So, um, without backstory to really start things off between Randall and Emily, they actually do a solid job of kind of the interactions with those two making it feel like it's a real relationship, that, like, you kind of almost know them, and then through their dialogue, you pick up on little pieces that kind of gradually builds who they are as characters, what their relationship has been in the past, and what is currently. You just kind of get those little tidbits as things go on. And then you start getting those types of little tidbits from the other couple who's in the beach house as well. So from a writing standpoint, kind of having those little niblets of knowledge about the characters and their backstories is pretty well done. It's kind of paced well in the beginning of the film until you get to, you know, the catalyst of it being a horror film. And then from there on out, like, we don't need to know about backstory in, anymore. It's it, Everything's totally changed at that point. And then we're looking for the horrific stuff, the gross-out stuff, the, the um, interesting, like, what is it all about moments. 
Something odd and slightly alarming happens pretty early on in the film, which creates a real interest in finding out what's really going on here. There is kind of like... There are a few moments that actually kind of like are a little bit off and you're kind of like, that's slightly a problem, but it doesn't seem dire at the moment, but I need to know where this is going. Um, so it, the film does a good job at kind of like grabbing your interest and making you want to see it through, want to go all the way through it and see what's the point here? Where are we going? And in the end, there is a point. In the end, they are going somewhere. And that's one of the greatest things is that... There are oftentimes films that are made and, and you think, oh, we're, we're going on this journey and I'm ex excited to see where we go. And you don't really go anywhere by the end. Or, or where you go in the end is just like, eh. With this, they made some interesting points. There's some interesting underlying themes to this film. And um, I thought it was pretty solid. The acting is good for the most part. Um, some people better than others. But for the most part, pretty solid, especially for a lower budget film. Uh, the gradual discovery of tensions that kind of are underlying between Randall and Emily makes the story actually feel really realistic. It builds context, which is actually really important to understand the characters themselves, but also the dynamic between them. Uh, and then obviously that, you know, what ends up happening in the film much later, all the, you know, events, the horrific events, um, is metaphor for things going on between the two of them. So watch it and know that. Uh, there are some scenes that feel a bit like they're a little bit kind of stretched out, maybe to hit more of a particular runtime. This film's not super long with credits and everything. It's like an, an hour and 27 minutes. So it's not long, but there are times where it starts to feel long because some of the scenes feel a little too stretched out. Um, it's even in the end, which... In the end portion, when things are like really going and like the story's really moving and the and the terrible things have already been revealed, that's when you want it to just like keep moving, keep going, keep going. And and at times it kind of stagnates, and you're just like, mm, you know, I'm feeling a little bit bored at this point. But it doesn't linger like that too much. So it's a little bit of a criticism of the film, but it's not too bad overall. I think it is a pretty solid film. I think it's definitely worth checking out at least once. Because of the beach shooting, oh, I already talked about that, the location being beautiful, yeah. Uh, in, in addition, there are actually a few camera shots that are interesting to me. Um, some things that, obviously, they kind of step back and they're just like, oh, you know, what if, we sh what if we set the camera like this and shoot it like this? And at first, you're just like, oh, you know, I haven't really seen this done much, or I haven't seen this done at all before. And you're like, well, kind of looks cool, it looks nice. So, they got a little creative, I, I dig that. Uh, yeah, the gross out stuff, just the gross out stuff. Um, this is a movie, it, like, those moments are hard for me just because, like, it, literally that feeling of, like, your skin crawling. It's, I'd be interested to know if that happens with other people. So, if you've seen the film, put the comment down there. Uh, there are aspects of this film that make it feel like the movie Color Out of Space with Nicolas Cage, that Richard Stanley film that actually came out last year as well. Um, so it's interesting in that aspect. But where where things come from in Color Out of Space, it's kind of similar in um, The Beach House, but where it comes from is different, is very different. But it feels very similar. It's not exactly the same. Um, Color Out of Space looks way more polished, way more stylistic and artistic. And, um, you know, it has bigger names. It has, you know, higher level acting to it. So it's a bigger budget. Uh, so, you know, the Beach House would not be able to do that. But while I was watching this film, because of the way the story is and because of the interest level, uh, it made me really think to myself, I wonder what this film would have been and could have been had they had a much larger budget. This is one of those films where you're like, this is good enough that I really wonder if someone threw more money or if they just had access to more money for this film, what could it have been? What what bigger things would we, would we have seen? What crazier stuff would they have done visually with CGI or visually with practical effects? Um, there's so much more that could have been done with this, but I know they were just tied up because of budget. So that, that kind of sucks. But I think they did a good job with kind of what they had. So that's pretty good. Uh, 
there's an aspect of dealing with change and how tough that ends up being for people, but also how that can really fracture relationships, especially when one person is changing and the other person is staying relatively the same, or both people are changing and they're changing at a point where they're going on diverging paths in life. Um, and then, you know, what do you do? What decisions do you make? How do you deal with that? There's also an aspect of questioning how much we know as human beings or think we know and what happens when we have to deal with something that we never really considered, something that's part of that unknown to us. You know, what happens when something totally unexpected occurs and we're just not ready for it. You know, as humans, we're used to knowing a lot and being able to plan ahead and have things in place to be to feel like we, we got it handled whenever anything pops up. But inevitably, something's going to come along that we didn't plan for. We didn't even know about, potentially. And you have to adapt to that. And and this film kind of takes a little bit of that into account and, sh and is kind of a moment of, then what happens when you weren't planning for something, you didn't know about something, and then you have to react to it. So, And some people go with it. Some people succumb to it. Some people fight it. It's, it's a mix. There's a lot in the ocean. This is my final thought on this. There's a lot in the ocean we haven't discovered. And this is actually something that one of the character, one of the characters talks about in the film. So it has a tie into the actual film, really. What else is out there is kind of one of these questions. Um, and then my final thought is I pulled this from the National Ocean Service. This is an actual quote on there. More than 80% of our ocean is unmapped, unobserved, and unexplored. So that kind of goes to what I was just talking about with, you know, how much do we think we know and how much do we actually know and what happens when we come across something we don't know. So there you go. But overall, I thought this was a pretty solid film. Um, I would really be interested to see what Jeffrey A. Brown can do in the future, especially with a larger budget, budget because with the way this film was done, it kind of feels to me like if he's the type of person who can get a much larger budget, we can get a really good film visually out of that person. So interested to see what he could do in the future. Uh, pretty well done. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give this a three-star rating. This is a solid film. Uh, this is one of the relatively good offerings as a Shutter original. So people check it out. And when you do, go ahead and put some comments down there. We can talk about your thoughts on the film. And um, yeah, I'll, talk, I'll chat with you on there. But do me a quick favor, uh, hit that subscribe button. That's the best way for you to repay me for spending my time doing these, putting this information out there. So if you like any video I've ever done, consider this the best way to support me is to subscribe because it means a lot to me and it's totally painless. It, you know, you're not throwing money into it or anything like that. Just take that second to hit that subscribe. And then if you do that, also make sure you hit that notification bell because that'll let you know whenever I have a new video coming up or when I'm doing a live stream. So... I'd appreciate that. But regardless, thanks for taking your time to check this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.